on the stay. Continuing on from the previous video, we are in Nakano and we are about to go through to Nakano Broadway. Nakano Broadway is a mecca for brands of anime, manga and vintage collectibles. Unlike the techy and modern feel of Akihabara, here it's more about the vintage and the rare. Think of it as an attic of wonders. Now, when you come here for the first time, the first floor, as in the ground floor, there isn't much of that because most of those things are above us. On the day of filming, I didn't know that at all. So I was wandering around thinking, um, where are they? So most of the shops on this floor are very similar to what you saw in the previous video, the shops in some mall, which is where we came from. If you ever do come here, make sure to go around the area, Nakano in general, because there are some quirky cafes, uh, quirky izakaya, and so on. Similar to Akihabara, you can see shops like these, which is a camera shop on the right. And the next one, Recollection, is a shop full of refurbished devices. The next two shops are watch shops, which are rather unique because I've seen more watch shops upstairs as well. Time Walker, what a cool name. Now, there's a sign at the top next to this clothing store which says Tabako that way. Having lived in New Zealand for such a long time, I've become repulsed by the smell of cigarettes. So there are times when I think that Japan could do a little more. The shop that's coming up is called Okashino Machioka. If you want to buy souvenir for your mates and families, or just want to try some Japanese snacks, then do come here. The next shop coming up is called Weapon Shop. What? And it's a Korean cosmetics store. I still have no idea why it's called that name, but um, very unique, yeah. In Japan in general, and people who care about skincare routine, highly value Korean cosmetic products because they work really well. And if you go to places like Shingokubo in Tokyo, it's basically a Korean town. So you see a lot of those shops as well. This shop is called Sandoragu, which is more than a pharmacy. Here's a fun fact. There is a thing called medical tourism. They especially come from China because of the trust in Japanese products and they can be considered souvenirs or gifts. Now these are not the same as more intensive medical tourism such as surgeries or treatments. Since this is my first time being here, I was a little bit lost. So you see some odd camera movements because I don't know where things are and the camera is attached to my bag. And now my friend is asking what the differences are between metal games and pachinko. Pachinko is mainly used for gambling, whilst metal games are more recreational arcade games. And we are standing actually in front of an arcade. The game mechanics are similar, but pachinko is a vertical game that's a mix between slot machines and pinball with players aiming to catch balls in certain pockets, while metal games involve trying to push coins or medals off a ledge to win more coins for prizes. The payout in Pachinko is where players can indirectly exchange their winnings for cash outside the parlor. With metal games, on the other hand, winnings are typically exchanged for prizes within the arcade and are not easily converted to cash. In terms of location, pachinko is usually played in a specialized pachinko parlor and metal games are often found in game centers or arcades like here alongside other video games and crane games. Lastly, the target audience is a little different. While both games are popular amongst adults, pachinko parlors often have an older clientele whereas game centers with metal games attract a wide age range. So in essence, while both pachinko and metal games involve a degree of luck, strategy and potential to win prizes, they differ in mechanics, purpose and culture. I'm currently staring at a map, so let's skip to the next bit. We are going to go upstairs because that's where all the cool things are. 
And what we've noticed as soon as we came to this floor was that、um, a lot of the shops were closed. We didn't know why. But here is one of the first stores of all the model cars and trains. And this, I found it really fascinating. It's called Renzu, so like a lens. And it had doors closed with a phone on the side. And we thought it was a bit sketchy. But after Googling, it is a high end、uh, watch shop. So the purchasing experience and the range of watches would have been pretty, you know, up there. So if you were to visit, I'd assume you have to make an appointment and use that phone to say, I'm here. This, I believe, is just an ordinary bookshop. Even though some of the shops were closed, it was awesome to see that some of these shutters had drawings on them and many of them were rather colorful. So it wasn't all boring walking past them like this one. Really random, but really cool. Anyhow, this is one of the shops that sell wrestling masks and many other vintage things. This place is called Mandarake. It is a franchise. So you see a lot of these shops around, especially here and in Akihabara. The company focuses on the purchase and sale of a wide range of collectibles and otaku related goods, including anime and manga related items, DVDs, CDs, toys, figurines, trading cards, video games, and many more. You may have heard this that most of these are in really good conditions because embedded within the culture, Japanese culture, to look after things, objects. I still remember when my mate from New Zealand came over、um, to go to a second hand store for clothing. He said the qualities or the condition that the clothes are in are very good. Most of them are really good. But as a result, the prices remained rather high. Now, these are figurines. The, one on the, the ones on the left are Sailor Moon. I can see some Gojira and Mononoke Hime. In this cabinet, and we're getting pretty excited. <laughs> and I can see some Ultraman, Ultraman, and Kamen Rider, Mask Rider, I guess in English. Now, these usually have been bought from stores, but some are limited editions and or one through crane games. And here are other things that I found in the complex. Here we have Tamagotchi. They still work. Here we have IKEA bags, KFC, and McDonald's bags. Quite fancy. Now, this was one of our more unique Mandarake stores. This one sells retro goods, antique goods, vintage toys, and many more. We are now on the third floor, walking past a bunch of gachapon.、Uh, if you get addicted, you're gonna lose a lot of money on those. <laughs> Um, these are shops specialized in smaller figurines, and we have one of the most iconic Mandarake stores. It's called Honten, which means main store or flagship store. This one specializes in books, comic books, and magazines. Yep, it's a bit of a crazy store with all those things at the top. What I'm pointing here is called Shaman King, and I grew up with it. And it's a shonen manga, so it has a predictable story development, but I still absolutely loved it. The other popular shonen manga include things like、uh, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, Dragon Ball, My Hero Academia. Um, Demon Slayer, etc. It's worth noting that while Shonen is aimed at specific d e m o g r a p h i c it has a broad appeal, and many adults of all genders also enjoy these stories. All these are second hand, so you can get them for much cheaper as well. Reading manga is great for your reading skills and literacy, so if you have a kid, buy them a manga. Moving on. 
This Mandarake store, a small one, specializes in robots, figurines. And this is where you basically sell your items that may be worth something. And there is a handling fee. And they check for obviously packaging, um, damages, etc. And that's where it gets valued. You can sell a whole range of things from comics, books, magazines, photo book, dolls, uh, figurines, vintage figurines, vintage toys, cards, stickers, cosplays, posters, board games, CDs, DVDs, it goes on. This store specializes in small figurines and my friend sold Agumon from Digimon and said, I want this! Yes, you can find your favorite plushies from all these stores at a reasonable price. As I was making this video, I've noticed that Mandarake actually owns most of the shops in Nakano Broadway. So, if you want to know what's inside, go to their website, Mandarake Nakano Store. And if you scroll down, you see all the shops that are in Nakano Broadway owned by Mandarake. And I was talking about this one, Henya or Henya. And it tells you what they have in store. Corporate novelty goods, vintage and antique toys, uh, templates, super alloys, monster soft vinyl. So very really easy way to find out what they actually offer. Anyway, I hope you learned something new. And remember, while Akihabara's neon lights beckon, the quiet allure of Nakano Broadway is waiting for your discovery. Until next time, kakite no!